how do you integrate deep work into your life? What are the different scheduling strategies that you would recommend just at a high level? Yeah. What are different ideas there? Well, I mean, I'm a big fan of time blocking, right? So if you're facing your workday, don't allow like your inbox or a to-do list to sort of drive you. Don't just come into your day and think, what do I want to do next? Yes. I mean, I'm a big plan of saying, here's the time, here's the time available. Let me make a plan for it. Right. So I have a meeting here, I have an appointment here. Here's what's left. What do I actually want to do with it? So in this half hour, I'm going to work on this. For this 90 minute block, I'm going to work on that. And during this hour, I'm going to try to fit this in. And then actually I have this half hour gap between two meetings. So why don't I take advantage of that to go run five errands? I can kind of batch those together. But blocking out in advance, this is what I want to do with the time available. I mean, I find that's much more effective. Now, once you're doing this, once you're in a discipline of time blocking, it's much easier to actually see this is where I want, for example, the deep work. And I can get a handle on the other things that need to happen and find better places to to fit them so I can prioritize this. And you're going to get a lot more of that done than if it's just going through your day and saying, what's next? I schedule every single day kind of thing. So it's like try to in the morning to try to uh, have a plan. Yeah. So, you know, I do a quarterly, weekly, daily planning. So at the semester or quarterly level, I have a, a big picture vision for what I'm trying to get done, you know, during the fall, let's say, or during the winter. Like I want to, these are, there's a deadline coming up for academic papers at the end of the season. Here's what I'm working on. I want to have this many chapters done of a book, something like this. Like you have the, the big picture vision of, of what you want to get done. Then weekly, you look at that and then you look at your week and you put together a plan for like, okay, what am I going to, what's my week going to look like? What do I need to do? Or how am I going to make progress on these things? Maybe, maybe I need to do an hour every morning, or I see that Monday is my only really empty day. So that's going to be the day that I really need to nail on writing or something like this. And then every day you look at your weekly plan and say, let me block off the actual hours. So you, you do that, that three scales, the the quarterly down to weekly, down to daily. And we're talking about actual times of day versus, yeah. so the alternative is what I end up doing a lot, and I'm not sure it's the best way to do it, is uh, uh, scheduling the duration of time. This is the, This is called the luxury when you don't have any meetings. I'm like religiously don't do meetings. <laughs> all, all other academics are jealous of you, by the way. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no Zoom meetings. Uh, I I find those are that's one of the worst tragedies uh, tragedies of the pandemic is both the opportunity to what well, okay the positive thing is to have more time with your family, you know, sort of reconnect in many ways, and that that's really interesting. Uh, be able to remotely sort of not waste time on travel and all those kinds of things. The negative is, the, <laughs> actually both those things are also sources of the negative, uh, but the negative is like, it seems like people have multiplied the number of meetings because they're so easy to schedule. Yeah. And there's nothing more draining to me, intellectually, philosophically, just my spirit is destroyed by even a 10 minute Zoom meeting. Like, what are we doing here? What's the meaning of life? Come yeah, on. What is yeah all I, about? I have I, every Zoom meeting is I have an existential crisis. So <laughs> Kierkegaard with a <laughs> internet connection. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, what the hell were we talking about? Oh, uh, so when you don't have meetings, there's a luxury to really allow for certain things if they need to, like the important things, like deep work sessions, to last way longer than you uh, maybe plan for. I mean, that's my goal is to try to schedule, the goal is to schedule, to sit and focus for a particular task for an hour and hope I can keep going. Yeah. And hope I can get lost in it. Yeah. And uh, do, you, do you find that this is at all an okay way to go? And uh, the time blocking is just something you have to do to actually be an adult and operate in this real world? Or is there some magic to the time blocking? Well, I mean, uh, there's magic to the intention. Uh, there's magic to it if you have varied responsibilities, right? So I'm often juggling multiple jobs, essentially. There's there's academic stuff, there's teaching stuff, there's book stuff, there's the the business surrounding, you know, surrounding my, my book stuff. But I'm of your same mindset. If a deep work session is going well, you just rock and roll. And let it let it go on. So, like one of the, the big keys of time block, at least the way I do it. So I even you know sell this planner to help people time block. It has many columns because the discipline is oh, if your initial schedule changes, you just move over one. Next time you get a chance, you move over one column, and then you just fix it for the time that's remaining. 
So in other words, there's not, ex- there's no bonus for, I made a schedule and I stuck with it. Like there's actually, it's not like you get a prize for it, right? Yeah. Like for me, the prize is I have an intentional plan for my time. And if I have to change that plan, that's fine. Like the state I want to be is basically at any point in the day, I've thought about what time remains and, and gave it some thought for what to do, because I'll do the same thing, even though I have a lot more meetings and other types of things I have to do in my, in my various jobs. And I basically prioritize the deep work uh, and they get yelled at a lot. Yeah, so that's kind it. of my strategy is like, just be okay. Just be okay getting yelled at a lot because I feel <laughs> you if you're rolling. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's what it is for me. Like with writing, I think it's writing so hard in a certain way that it's, you don't really get on a roll in some sense. Like it's just difficult, mm-hmm. uh, but working on proofs, it's very hard to pull yourself away from a proof if you start to get some traction. Just you, you've been at it for a couple hours, and then you feel the uh, the pins and tumblers starting to click together, and progress is being made. It's really hard to call, pull away from that. So, so I'm willing to get yelled at by almost everyone. Of course, there is also uh, a positive effect to uh, pulling yourself out of it when things are going great, because then you're kind of excited to resume. Yeah, as opposed to stopping on a on a dead end. That's true. That the, there's an uh, the yeah there's a uh, there's an extra force of procrastination that comes with if you stop on a dead end to return to the task yeah or a, or a cold start yeah like it, it, whenever I fit, like I'm in a stage now I, I submitted a few papers recently so now we're sort of starting know. something up from cold and it it takes way too long to get going because it's very hard to it's very hard to get the motivation to schedule a time when it's not, yeah, we're in it. Like, yeah. here's where we are. We feel like something's about to give here. When you're in the very early stages where it's just, I don't know, I'm going to read hard papers and it's going to be hard to understand them. And I'm going to have no idea how to make progress is not, is not motivating. <laughs>